Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Taco Break channel. As the thumbnail says, we're gonna be doing some MPG testing today and seeing if the ETC power button actually works. Damn, I need to clean that. So two videos ago, I posted a video that got kind of big in terms of views, and that was the good and the bad on the Toyota Tacoma, my lifted Toyota Tacoma. And one of the biggest things talked about in the comments was MPG, miles per gallon. What's the best way to get miles per gallon? And tons of you left tips and tricks on how to get better miles per gallon out of your stock Toyota Tacoma or with a lifted one like mine. And there are a lot of factors that actually play into the miles per gallon that you get on your Toyota Tacoma. And I wanted to make a video going over the miles per gallon that I actually get. So we're gonna be actually measuring the fuel consumption that I'm getting and then calculating the actual miles per gallon that I am getting. And we're gonna test out different driving abilities. So we're gonna test out normal mode, we're gonna test out ETC, and ETC plus the sport functionality. Now, before I dive into this actual video, I do want to clarify that if you're buying a Toyota Tacoma and you lift it like I did and you put bigger rims and tires on it, if you're really that concerned about getting the best miles per gallon, like you're super concerned that you're not getting really good miles per gallon, you shouldn't have bought that truck in the first place and you shouldn't have lifted it and you shouldn't have put bigger tires. Anyways, in today's video to test out the MPG, I have a set 20 mile loop that we're gonna be doing and we're gonna be going to the pump and measuring how much fuel my truck is actually consuming and then calculating the miles per gallon. And we're gonna do that for a variety of different tests. So we're gonna be going on like three different 20 mile road trips, testing out the MPGs. It's gonna be a long time filming this video. So if you would, please slap a like on this video. It would really help a lot. But anyways, before I get any further, I wanna make sure you guys know the actual specs and the details of what my truck has on it that are not stock. So that way you can get some sort of comparison to what you might be rocking on your truck. Or if you're stock, you're definitely gonna be getting better miles per gallon than what I'm getting on this setup. The first thing to point out is my bigger rims and tires. These are 18 by nine fuel coupler rims that come in at 34 pounds and they are wrapped in Goodyear Duratrax 275-65R18s, which is a 45 pound tire. So altogether, this is an 80 pound wheel tire setup that I'm rocking on all four corners. In comparison to those wheels and tires, the stock 2020 TR off-road that I have came with these tires right here which are 16 inch aluminum rims wrapped in a Goodyear Wrangler all-terrain Kevlar which is a 265-70R16 and this wheel and tire comes in at 63 pounds so my wheels and tires are 17 pounds each heavier than the stock tires and then the other things that we need to take into consideration is the fact that I have a three inch lift kit from Rough Country and I have a K&N air intake and that's about it and last thing here before we head on over to the gas station to start the testing I need to tell you guys what the tire pressure is that I'm rocking on these tires all right so it is a little hot out but the temperature readings are pretty much correct here I run about 38 psi as you guys can see right there we have 39 39 and 40 and 36 that 36 though is not actually true and these tires are not in that orientation either if you guys have watched a previous video i have five full-size tires my spare is a full-size tire and i do a five tire rotation so it was pretty much pointless for me to actually try and keep track of the tires because normally one of the tires on this reading is in the spare position which is what is happening right now so the one tire right now that is a spare is the one that's reading 36 psi because it is not on the actual truck the one that is there though doesn't have a reading and it's this one right here because you can see it just has a normal valve stem not the fancy TSP valve stem see this one it's got the fancy one the really hard TSP one so as I mentioned from the beginning I'm trying to keep as many factors the same as possible in this test so I am now going to be traveling to the same gas station that I always get gas at it's the same gas that I literally just got two days ago the gas is as similar as possible I always get the normal unleaded lowest grade gasoline I think it's 87 octane then beyond that I am going to drive a little bit and have the truck warm warm up before I actually go fuel up. So that way the engine is at the same temperature it was when the first run, the second run, and the third run is running. And then beyond that, my AC is climate control and it will be left at about 73 degrees for the whole entire test. So everything is as similar as possible. As you guys know, Toyota does have a stock 
readout of your miles per gallon. It's right there on the screen. But we cannot rely on that because my tires are two inches bigger in diameter than the stock tires. And that calculation is based on the stock tire. So for that reason, we're gonna actually calculate what the miles per gallon of this truck is. I'm gonna be using GPS to determine this set. It's about 20 miles, but we're gonna be using GPS to determine the actual miles that this set route is that we're gonna be going on. And then we're gonna be using the actual pump to measure how much fuel we actually consume on each trip. And then after I do the MPG testing, I have always been curious as to if the ETC power button, which we're gonna be testing the MPG on, does actually give you more power or not. So we're gonna be doing some zero to 60 pulls and we're gonna time how long it takes to get from zero to 60 uh, on ETC and on regular to see if there's a difference. All right, so we at the gas station. So what we're gonna be doing is filling up on 87. Then once this is full, we're gonna start a timer for one minute and then we're gonna to top it off and then that is gonna be basically full. And we're gonna do that each time. And then when we come back basically after this first trip we're gonna be able to see exactly how many gallons of fuel we used on that test timer is started I don't know if you guys can see it but when we hit one minute on there we'll top it off and we'll be ready to go and there is one minute and there we go we're good to go and we are off like I said this is a set 20 mile route that I basically have picked out it is predominantly uh, highway driving about 65 miles per hour for the most part we do have to get up to the actual portion of the highway so I am going to be using cruise to keep this as a controlled of a test as possible I also am going to be as cautious on the throttle as I possibly can this first run we're doing right now is going to be on stock so no ECT function just the stock transmission everything is on the baseline functions basically as you guys as you can see right here as I'm at a red light ETC function is not on there it is on it's off so no ECT function we're in normal driving mode right here and we're good to go I'm also going to try and capture how often this thing likes to shift a little bit too on the trip I'm really excited to see what the numbers are leave down the comment section down below if you are right now don't cheat and uh, let me know do you think the ETC is going to improve it and by how much? Let me know. Like I mentioned here on the portions that I'm not using cruise control, which is this little stretch leading up to the actual on-ramp for the highway. I'm using my foot to control the throttle and I'm basically keeping it under uh, 2000 RPMs. All right, cruise is set at 70 miles per hour. Not sure how well you can tell. And we are cruising. Now we might run into traffic a couple times, that's uh, just the nature of the beast of this test, but basically I'm heading 10 miles out on the road and then there's a set spot that I'm gonna be doing a turnaround and coming back 10 miles. So I do have some slow people in front of me, not too big of a concern. We dropped down to about 62 miles per hour. Uh, can't really do much about it. This right here is a good example of the, the shifting. It's, it's just sitting there in this gear at 3000 RPMs and it doesn't wanna shift, or it doesn't wanna accelerate a little bit to shift down into a lower gear. So it's just sitting here in this gear going 60 miles per, miles per hour and not shifting down at three, 3K. Well, no, right there. It finally shifted down. Literally sat on at 3,000 RPM, cruising at 69. It's at speed for probably a good 30 seconds there. Didn't bother to shift up or shift down. Here, it's probably going to do it again here. Shifts up. Hill. There, it shifted down. Finally. That's kind of what I meant on that original video on it's, it's shift happy. It doesn't really know what gears to go into when it's on the highway. It'll shift shift down and stay in a gear for like a super long period of time and never, you know, just shift back down, man. Or shift shift up one gear and you'll be good. Like you're at speed. It just it just it just doesn't know. So we are currently coming up to the exit that I'm gonna take for the 10 mile turnaround right now. We're actually at 10 point uh, six, 10.7 miles on uh, my uh, GPS tracking down here. So we're gonna take this exit ramp right here, turn around and head back for test number one. So we've reached the exit. We are currently 11.2 miles. Anybody wondering, this is my GPS tracking app. I run a DJ business, so I have to track my personal miles versus my work miles. And this one is the app I use to check that. So if we check our current miles per gallon, again, going 70 miles per hour for 10 miles, well, 11 miles, we are currently at 17.3 miles per gallon on the stock non-ECT mode. Which, if you guys remember from the last video, I said that I normally get anywhere from uh, like 14 to 15 miles per gallon, and that is assuming that I'm getting better gas mileage than what the readout is. And the reason for that is on my trip to work, I'm normally going around 85 miles per hour. 
uh, not 70, and I am nowhere near a baby on the throttle like I am right now. 11 more miles and we will conclude test one. Kind of been another slow down here on the way back in a very similar spot as where we were originally. Um, down to about 63 miles per hour. It's just, uh, it's just the ways of this road right here. It gets into a lot of traffic as you guys can see. So we got a little bit of a trip now over to the gas station, just uh, literally about half a mile down the road, and we will see how much fuel we consumed on the first trip on normal mode, and then we will get to redo this test with the ECT power engaged. And as I come to a stop here at the uh, stoplight right now, we're at 17.3 on the Toyota Tacoma's Est estimated miles per gallon. We were at 17.9 at the midway point. Again, still babying the throttle on the way back to the gas station, not letting it go over two grand on the RPMs, keeping them RPMs down, and let's fuel up. Trip summary, 21.6 miles, 17.1 miles per gallon, and estimated to empty 262 miles. Now, as I mentioned, that is not accurate because we have bigger wheels. So we actually traveled farther than what the truck thinks we traveled. And according to my GPS, we traveled 22.8 miles. So that is what we're gonna be using for our calculation. So pretty interesting. Let's fuel up. And how much fuel did we use? 1.193 gallons. And for everyone wondering, a 22.8 mile trip on normal function, that gives us a miles per gallon, basically take your miles, divide them by the gallons we use, of 19.11 miles per gallon. Not bad, especially since uh, you know we're lifted. Now we are back in the truck and we are going to engage ECT power because it's going to give us a ton more miles per gallon, or at least we hope. So like I mentioned, we are going back on the exact, the exact same trip that we just took and we're going to see how many gallons of fuel we used yet again for this same 22.8 mile trip here we go now i'm going to spare you guys the misery of me explaining every last little thing like i did on the first test because it's the exact same thing i will show you guys if there is any difference in the shifting pattern using ect power versus regular you know how it like to stick at 3000 rpms and stay in gear and not shift up to uh, get better miles per gallon potentially um, so I'll show you guys that, but for the most part, this is going to be all time-lapse footage, and I'll see you guys back at the gas station. Running into traffic again immediately as soon as we get on the highway. A little bit more than last time, we are down at 55 miles per hour. I'm hoping these guys actually decide to speed up a little bit and get back up to speed, uh, which we are right now. We're back up to 63 real quick. Uh, we're still getting faster. Looks like we're going to be up right about 70. So uh, one thing to note on that trip, uh, we're, we got traffic yet again, just like we did on the last one. Uh, so similar test so far as far as I'm concerned All right at the same midway point as last time I am still uh, moving so I can't really stop and show you guys But we are recording 17 point well it said 17.5 there for a second one thing I have noticed is that it seems like it is a little bit more of an aggressive shifting on ECT power than on the stock version like when the truck starts to slow down when we go up like a gradual hill or something like that it seems to want to downshift a little bit quicker than what it did uh in the stock non-ect function so interesting yeah we, we're definitely running into way more traffic on this one i mean this is like the four person now that i've ran into that's driving way under the speed limit for what knows i don't i don't have any clue We've dropped down to 55 at least three times now. If the miles per gallon is better, even on this run, then that says a lot because we ran into a lot more traffic that has slowed us down and had to, like like right now, we're slowing down again. The speeding up, slowing down, speeding up, slowing down is going to hurt our miles per gallon. It's not gonna help it in any way, shape, or form. All right, so coming up to the same point that we were at last time, we're actually listing 17.6 miles per gallon on the Tacoma. We will now shut the truck off and our trip summary is 21.6 at 18.1 miles per gallon. So according to the truck, we are better. Fuel consumption, 1.2 gallons, 1.203. And this is where I kind of come to the idea that I'm not sure this is the most accurate way to test it. Because as you guys know, that is a tad bit, a tad bit more fuel than what we used last time giving us a 
MPG of 18.95. And as you guys are probably thinking right now, 20 miles is a very, very limited test. I mean, that's not even, that's literally like one gallon in this thing. So how accurate this thing is, I'm not entirely sure. All I can tell you though, is that the truck itself is telling me that we got better miles per gallon. Is it exactly uh, what we're getting? No, but at least for reference point, we can understand that uh, the truck is actually getting about one to two miles per gallon better than what the truck actually says on the inside but with the actual pump here it's saying we got worse so again i'm not really entirely sure uh how consistent or accurate this is but we do have one more test to do and that is with etc on and in the sports functionality which is not really sport to say the least and also with this only being a 20 mile test i do want to let you guys know some background on my testing using etc so this is the actual like measuring test or whatever when i dropped the video talking about the good and bad of the tacoma and i said that my miles per gallon was pretty bad a lot of you guys jumped and immediately told me to try etc so over the last two weeks i actually have been trying out etc on my way and back to work and it's a hundred mile round trip so a lot more miles than just this limited 20 mile test and i can confirm that i have been seeing on the readout what the truck has been telling me is that i have been getting about one to two miles per gallon better than when I was running stock. I drive this truck every single day and I can literally tell you to a T that this truck would always say about 13 miles per gallon on the normal mode driving back and forth to work all the time 13 miles a gallon 13 miles a gallon 13 miles a gallon every single time and ever since i've switched to the etc function i've been getting 14 to 15 on the readout not messing with the throttle still going to 85 miles per hour still flooring it every once in a while underneath a bridge to hear the cold air intake and i i'm getting better gas mileage on etc so i did just want to put that into the video right here this is the measuring test and it is very limiting and it is telling us the truck is telling us that we're getting a little bit better gas mileage even though our measuring device which is the pump which we really don't know how accurate it is is telling us that we're not getting better gas mileage in my opinion i would trust the truck over the gas meter but let's get on to the third and final test so for the third test we're going to engage etc power and we're going to pop this thing into the sport standard whatever you want to call it i don't even think it's called sport to be honest and then we're going to plus this all the way up to six so currently we're in the s6 etc power combined functionality heading down the highway for test number two on this 22.8 mile loop and so far so good no traffic so uh we're in the best case scenario right now for testing this out running on cruise control at 70 miles per hour just like we have for every single test prior. I spoke too soon, we have hit traffic and we are down to a whopping 55 miles per hour thanks to an orange eclipse up front that doesn't seem to want to drive the speed limit. Okay, so we finally have uh, made it past the slow traffic. We did just rock about two miles, going about 60 miles per hour. So that right there can possibly increase the miles per gallon of this test. Again though, this is real world testing. This is what happens in the real world. This is what we're doing. Once again, here's a hill. We will be shifting probably, maybe. So there is a second slight hill coming up right here, which the truck normally in ETC and just without ETC on has downshifted and gone up to 3000 RPMs to make it up the hill. So let's see, it, it downshifted right there. It probably went fit right there. Okay, we're at 3000. As you saw there, it shifted from sixth to fifth. Wow, look at that. It got up the speed and dropped instantly back it upshifted the fifth, and now it upshifted to, it has it right there, it went to sixth. Wow. Now you guys can't see it on the tag, it just says six down there, S6. Um, but I know it was in sixth gear basically, right now it's in sixth. And it shifted down to fifth, and then it went down to fourth, went up to 3,000 RPMs, and then as you guys saw there, it quickly went back to fifth gear. Very interesting. All right, so we downshifted the fifth there. Let's see if it goes back to fourth here again. Oh, and the six. As you can see though, there with the miles per hour that we're traveling right now, it is holding a strong steady at 70. That's very interesting to me because on the normal mode or just on ETC power too, it, and not in the S mode, it normally does not stay exactly at 70 miles per hour. Normally it's it rides around 69 and then 68, and then eventually it'll downshift to get itself back up to 70. So very interesting that when you're on the S6 mode, and we just now got to the exit, that it stays right at 70. And also 
it seems to want to shift back up to higher gears like it should we're telling it basically to stay in sixth gear it shifts up a lot quicker so very interesting so we're at the midway point let's see what our mpg is reading 17.5 at the midway point point. and like i mentioned to you guys before i started this third run right here this is not something I have tried. I have not tried running it in this S6 mode and ETC power. I've only been testing ETC power going back and forth to work. So I'm really, really tempted now to run S6 just on this preliminary testing. But like I said, we will see here at the end what the miles per gallon actually is, both on the truck and based on the gas consumption at the pump. So I'm really curious to watch this again here just to see if it will go up to 3,000 RPMs. Okay, that's normal. Now how quick does it uh, upshift to get out of the 3,000? Wow, okay, that's interesting. So as you can kind of see there, it likes to keep it at 70 miles per hour and it will quickly uh, upshift once it's at speed. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that's gonna get us better gas mileage. It's doing it again right now. We're at 3,000 RPMs and it quickly downshifted or upshifted. It had to do it again to go up this hill, so it did it twice. Where basically it's it's hunting that gear, hunting that gear. We have it set to S6, so it's trying its best to stay in the highest gear possible, which I'm not saying is going to give us the best gas mileage. Because if it has to do that repeatedly on a hill, downshift, upshift, downshift, upshift, that's actually going to eat up a little bit more gas than if it just kind of rides out one gear. It's going to be very interesting to see what these results are for the third run. So we are almost to the exit right now. And so far I can tell you this was a lot smoother of a trip, a lot less traffic than on the second trip. A lot similar to what we did on the first one in terms of the traffic that I ran into. Really didn't run into any on this trip. So that is good for our overall test. All right, so at the end of the on-ramp, our MPG is 17.4. And when we get to the gas station, the final trip is 16.4 eight miles per gallon so according to the truck this was absolutely like absolutely the worst trip that we have done for miles per gallon according to the truck let's see if the pump agrees or disagrees because we don't know because the pump is uh, so far the pump has been lying to us so we'll see 1.25 so with the conclusion of the third mpg test the gas pump actually agreed with the truck and gave us an overall MPG of 18.21 gallons. So basically overall as a wrap compared to what the pump says and what the truck says, basically our first run, the stock one, and then on the ETC power function, we were pretty much the same. I mean, the truck said it was 18.1 using ETC, normal was 17.9. The pump said 19.1 miles per gallon on stock and 18.95 on ETC. So very similar results for those two runs. This one though, significantly worse, 16 point, I believe it said five or 16.8 miles per gallon on the truck. And we scored a 18.2 on the pump. So definitely not the best mode to be running your truck in. So overall, my wrap up here on the miles per gallon portion, how to get the best miles per gallon out of your Toyota Tacoma if you're daily driving it, mostly on the highway like I am. In the case of this test, the truck said it was better, just slightly better in terms of miles per gallon. The uh, pump said it was just slightly worse, but I can tell you guys in my personal experience driving this back and forth 100 miles every single day to work and back, that it does improve your miles per gallon. Now, we can definitely prove without a fact though that with this testing, running it in the ETC power function with the sports or the standard, running it in S mode at S mode six is gonna get you the worst miles per gallon. Like I said, while we were on that last trip right there, the fact that it had to downshift, upshift, downshift, upshift, that is definitely not the best uh, for your miles per gallon. You definitely don't want it shifting up and down, being very shift happy. That is not the way to get the best miles per gallon. So my conclusion on miles per gallon is to run it in ETC mode. That is what I've been running. Uh, back and forth to work that is the best way to get the best miles per gallon so the last part though of this test is we wanted to do some stock 0 to 60 pulls 
and see what is faster on ETC power function or just on the stock. My odds are that it's probably just gonna be on the normal mode that's gonna be the fastest. First off, because I can't time this and this doesn't have like a zero to 60 timer on it, we will have the timers for the zero to 60 up in the upper right or upper left on these pools so that you guys can see what the zero to 60 pools actually are. So here we go. And go. Now, because doing pools are a lot quicker than, say, uh, doing a 20 mile per gallon uh, run, I'm going to be doing multiple ones so that we can see how uh, how quick it is. And that is foot to the floor. All right, so we're going to turn around now. I have ETC power. And we're gonna see if it's any faster. Like I noted there, guys, I'm, I'm basically, I hit the brake, I hit the gas, I hold it in for a few seconds, and then I let go, just to give it some sort of a launch. Also, while I'm waiting here at a red light, uh, just like I talked about in the MPG, you're driving a truck, so you really shouldn't be too concerned. You're driving a truck, you shouldn't be really too concerned on zero to 60 pools, but I'm more or less using this for a reference in terms of like if you're pulling a trailer like I do, the faster your zero to 60 is probably the faster it's gonna put down the power. So it should give you some sort of real world representation of speed and power. I don't know, this just, I felt like throwing it in the video. It's fun. Everyone loves zero to 60 times, right? All right, so we got a truck coming up here and we're gonna pull up in and stop and do our zero to 60 on ETC power. Gas, go. quicker I'm not gonna lie that felt quicker that definitely felt quicker that just felt like it, it rode out the the rpm power band a lot longer than what it did in the normal mode I'm really interested to see these times well I was going to do another 0 to 60 pull but I just saw a cop he was sitting under the underpass and he pulled out right there maybe this will turn into a get Rick's get, <laughs> taco Rick gets pulled over video we are in ETC function. Yeah, that definitely is faster. I mean, I don't need a timer to know that. For sure, I'm definitely gonna to need to see the times, but that feels faster. I'm gonna do one more right here. Uh, we're gonna get one more in. Actually, we're gonna do this stock now that I, I know exactly how it feels. ETC off, brake, Acceleration, and let go. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. All right, running that one in stock now. I don't know. I'm going to have to see the times. I'm going to have to see the times. Definitely going to have to see the times. Now, one of these is slightly downhill. So the first one going this way is slightly downhill. The one going this way is slightly uphill. So it might be a little bit slower, um, but I will note that in the edit of which one is slightly downhill and which one is slightly uphill um, for the purposes of this video. And also just something to notice since I have been driving with ETC power for a little over a week now, the truck feels more responsive, just driving in general, which is kind of weird. We're getting better gas mileage and it feels more responsive in terms of the throttle. All right, I've been up in the office, I've been watching the zero to 60 pools and I've just been using my phone to time them. Um, just, it was easier for me. You guys know what the actual times are on the screen. But um, basically, there was no difference other than the last two pools. The last two pools, both the stock one and the ETC function were the fastest pools of the group. And I noticed that my uh, my initial revs, when basically I was hit flooring it before I let go of the brake and went, those were the two pools that I was right at uh, 2,000 RPMs when I let go. The other ones were around 1,500 to 1,750 uh, when I let go. So had the highest RPMs off the line, that's gonna give you the quickest jump, and that leads to why those times were slightly faster than the rest. So from a zero to 60 pull, both are equal. There is no difference in terms of power between the two functionalities. MPG-wise though, we have slightly proved today that 
The ETC function is the best route to go for MPG. Again, this is my testing. This is what I got on these results. Your results may vary, but with my lifted truck and all those modifications I talked about at the beginning of the video, I found that I'm getting the best miles per gallon when I am in the ETC function only, not in S manual or anything like that. When I am in ETC, that is when I'm getting the best miles per gallon. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please slap a like on this video. Don't forget, we're on the road to 5,000 subscribers right now. You guys are showing tons of love and support. The subscribers are growing so fast. It's awesome. Uh, but we're on the road to 5K, so hit that subscribe button. Turn on post notifications so you can see all the new awesome videos that I'm uploading every single week. Leave down in the comment section down below what videos you guys want to see. And like always, Taco Rick out. Peace. Taco Rick out. Peace. See you guys. Appreciate the love.